Hi guys, welcome to Metal and Rock Zone. Happy New Year, it's the first episode of the year and there is new music out. It's Obituary, Dying of Everything. New album out today, Friday the 13th. Before I start talking about this album, we're gonna do it like a track to track stuff, but uh, I wanna send a shout out to Dorina Uka, who is one of my most loyal subscribers on the channel. She watches all my videos. She had a birthday this week, so happy birthday Dorina. Her husband actually reached out to me to ask me to do the shout out because he says that she spends more time with me on YouTube than she spends with their marriage. Happy birthday Dorina, happy to hear this. So obituary. Uh, Donald Tarty and John Tarty, the brothers, drummer and singer, uh, founded this band in 1984 in Tampa, Florida. And, you know, Tampa, Florida, for those who know death metal, that, that's kind of a hot spot. You know, you had death, atheist, decide, monstrosity, morbid angel, and obituary. And uh, the Tarty brothers are still in the band, uh, as well as Trevor Perez, the guitarist, who's kind of, yeah, he's been with them from the start as well. Um, and... Uh, in 1989, they came with their first album, Slowly We Rot. Great album, definitely kind of a, a you know landmark flag in the in the genre. And then 1990, Cause of Death, which is one of my all-time favorite death metal albums. It's an album that kind of has stayed on my playlist since it came out, and uh, I can listen to it from start to finish. And uh, on that album, I felt that they upgraded somehow. They became better themselves at playing, and then they had James Murphy on guitar, who was in Death also, and I think. The, the jump between Slowly Rot and Cause of Death was enormous because of that. Um, and then they came with an album in 92 called The Incomplete that was also really good. So this kind of is a trilogy of, of really good early death metal albums that these guys were responsible for. Um, they went on hiatus from 97 to 2003 and then they, they came back. Uh, and the band is now, it's uh, John Tarty singing, Donald Tarty drumming, uh, Terry Butler on bass, he was in Death also. Uh, and uh, Trevor Perez on guitar, and then Ken Andrews on lead guitar. He's been with them since 2012, Terry Butler since 2010. Uh, since the kind of reformation or getting back together, um, then the highlight of the albums that have come out since then has been the self-titled one, Obituary, that came out in 2017. This album, Dying of Everything, is the 11th album. Uh, and uh, before we get into it, guys, Please follow us on social media, uh, Metal Rocks on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Obituary for me has always been a little bit different from the other bands somehow. I felt that they were a little bit less technical, not meaning that they couldn't play their instrument properly, but more that they, they used more groove somehow. And I think that's what, what got me. The groove part of it kind of made, made a stick on me. Uh, so I was very excited to find out that they were bringing out a new album. And uh, on top of that, I'm actually going to see them next week and next summer. I'm going to see them twice this year. Um, so I heard the singles when they came, uh, the title song, Dying of Everything, My Will to Live and uh, The Wrong Time. And I was kind of impressed. And, and, and to be very honest, when I started listening to this music back in the 90s, I was always thinking like these guys can't do this forever you know like you're not going to be singing death metal when you're in your 60s now these guys are in their 60s so let's find out if guys in their 60s can still deliver so friday the 13th what a appropriate date for a death metal album 10 songs just under 45 minutes um the cover it's really cool i always liked the covers from from uh, obituary they were always kind of gory scary and uh, and then they became a little bit more kind of fantasy-like and less cartoonish. And this one is definitely there. It leaves a lot for the imagination. There's some castle or something and the sun is in the mountain. There's fire, people. You don't know if it's a battle or a sacrifice or what's going on there, but it's really, really cool. And uh, I'm going to take, I'm going to talk about each individual track now. So we start off with the, the first song, uh, Barely Alive. It's an amazing song. It really kicks off with a very powerful start. I think it's actually one of the best songs on the album. Kind of gets me a bit into like a Slayer-ish uh, thrash speed wipe. Uh, I think this song could have been on uh, Seasons in the Apis or some, some album like that by Slayer. And then they have a breakdown after like two minutes that kind of gets me into a South of Heaven mood. So Slayer is one of my most favorite bands. So it's always nice for me when I hear Slayer and the music that I'm listening to. Um, and uh, then, yeah, has a really kind of a short, but cool solo, 
and a nice outro. And it's just three minutes, 30 seconds, but it delivers everything that you need within that time. And I think I will talk to you a few times throughout this about length of songs, because this one just does what it needs to do. Barely alive, song number one, great one. Second song, The Wrong Time. It's one of the singles and kind of sort of what got me most excited about this. Um, it has a very kind of simple riff that it evolves around, but it get, gets a darker vibe somehow. Like, I don't know what it is. There is something in the guitar sound and the singing there that kind of gives that really interesting vibe. And I think John Tarty is actually a better singer now than he was, I don't know, 35 years ago. And uh, I actually checked in on him not personally, but some of the stuff that he's been saying. And he uh, he feels that his singing has improved, that he is able to reach a registry in his singing that he didn't reach before. Uh, so it's actually quite interesting. Um, it oftentimes on this album, I feel a little bit where I can see where Atta Gates got their singing from. Thomas Lindbergh and Atta Gates and Don Tarty in 2023 are, they sound a lot the same. If you would speed up some of those songs and get them more into the other gates environment that I think you would hear it. Um, so the wrong time, second song, really good one. Um, and then the third song, Without a Conscious, this was a song that I didn't really like in the beginning. It didn't really stick with me. And I, after the first one or two listens, I, I, I had to go back and I was like, did I, did I really listen to a song? It didn't, it just didn't have any glue in it somehow. And now that I played the song like, I don't know, six, seven times, it, it, it grows. It actually gets better. Um, and after like two minutes, 20 seconds, I think it is, it gets into like a super, super heavy groove. And the drum part there is, is, is really good. But this song could be 30, 40 seconds shorter without any harm to it. Song number four, that's called War. And uh, it starts with like a machine gun, battlefield sound, some radio communication, and then this, the this kind of the guitars and the, and the song kind of takes over the sound. And that's really cool. After like three minutes and 10 seconds or something, it, it kicks into like a, the riff is done on acoustic guitar. And that's really, really cool and, and, and gives a, a lot of nuance and, and interesting vibe to this song. Um, the lyrics there are really, really simple, um, like in a killing field, in your crosshairs. I'll take you to war. That's it. I mean, not just this, but these kind of sentences. And uh, and actually, lyrically, this album kind of stays loyal to what they've always done. You know, I think they said somewhere that when you write music like this, you can't sing about uh, flowers in the spring. You need to sing about, you know, pain, misery, death, torture, and uh, war and stuff like that. And they do that. Um, the fifth one, the title song, uh, Dying of Everything, then here they speed it up a little bit, and that's actually how it is. This album is kind of fast, slow, fast, slow. Come to that later. Um, and they, they go into like a solid blast beat, and uh, again, gives me a little bit of a Slayerish vibe, but better soloing. Um, no disrespect to Slayer, but their solos have never been the most melodic solos in the world. Uh, and the, this guitar player, Ken Andrews, he, he, he's been on three albums, I think, now, and he really adds some flavor to this and, 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 and there are different parts on the album where he brings in different things and I'll talk more about that later. And I think in this song it definitely, you can, can hear that on the soloing. Um, again, a great song, but could have been 30 seconds shorter without any harm. So song number six is uh, My Will to Live. That was also released as a single. Uh, it's kind of slow and groovy and uh, it's kind of, yeah, they, they stick to this formula, three, four riffs per song, and then they write the good ones. Uh, on this song, there is like a cool wow wow pedal usage that Ken Andrews is doing. And uh, again, this song could have been a minute shorter without any harm. Um, I do get it that, you know, they're writing music, they're telling a story, they're delivering a message. So this is the length that they feel it had to be. But I got the message earlier, so it could have been shorter. Uh, song number seven, By the Dawn. This song I don't really like. It's the only song on the album where I kind of genuinely feel that it never takes off somehow. It never, it never, you know, grips me somehow. And uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't like this song. Song number seven, By the Dawn. Uh, song number eight, Weaponize the Hate. It's a very straightforward song, uh, but the singing is great. And again, could have been shorter, even by a minute. But it's, 
it delivers everything that Obituary is about, like this song somehow. It's it's not a great song, but it's a good song somehow. Um, and it made me think about like, what if a song like this would have come out in the 90s, you know, like people would have peed them pa their pants for it, you know. But now, you know, we've maybe been spoiled a little bit with all the good stuff that is out there in this genre. Uh, song number nine, uh, Torn Apart, that speeds up again and has a really kind of cool main riff. Uh, and it's kind of a riff that I, I sometimes say that it's the last sure shot before going out uh, riff. You know, you put on that riff, you do down two or three tequilas and you trust the living room and leave. Um, and uh, Rain and Blood is one of those for me and, and some of the Gojira riffs as well. But uh, yeah, this one has a really, really cool, cool riff. Uh, the solo is amazing. It starts off like a Dave Mustaine Megadeth solo and ends up as a Kirk Hammett Metallica solo. Really, really cool. And I, I, I really like this, uh, the guitar playing on this album. The lead guitar is, is just, it's, it's amazing. Um, and yeah, it adds, adds this diversity. Um, and then the guitar kind of leads to an outro in this song that is kind of interesting because I felt like, okay, I know this is going to go somewhere, but they don't give it to you right away. Like they, they let you wait a little bit. And in this case, the, the time is actually good because it's well spent. You're kind of waiting and then it comes in like, I don't know, like 30 seconds before the song ends and it kind of goes into what you wanted it to be. Uh, and again, this is where they're telling a story where I actually want to hear the story the whole, you know, all the way. Uh, the last song is called Be Warned. Um, I'm not sure what they're warning us about, but it's dark, gloomy, dirty, sludgy, whatever. And... Uh, scary. I think this song is kind of the weirdest song in a way on this album. It doesn't really fit with the other songs and I don't know. I mean, I'm just not good enough in this stuff, guys, that I can tell you if this is sludge metal, groove metal, doom metal, dark metal, whatever, but it's different. And if it would have been earlier on the album, I'm not sure it would have been great, but it's fitted right at the end and it, it's appropriate somehow. Um, Again, it uh, could have been a minute shorter. I, I know I, I, I started to repeat myself, but this was the last song, so I won't say this. Well, I might say it again a little bit in my verdict. Which brings me to the verdict. Can men in their 60s uh, deliver death metal? Um, or did they outgrow it and grow up and start playing blues or jazz or something like that? And the answer is yes, they can. Uh, the pros of this uh, album is uh, that it's some amazingly groovy riffs and uh, the great guitar playing on this, elite guitar playing, is, is just amazing. Uh, it adds so much diversity to, I don't know, like songs and song structure that could easily become stale somehow. So this kind of is the decorations that makes it exciting and interesting. Uh, plus, of course, the singing is great and all that. I'm, you know, the whole thing is good, but this, this is that X factor that I think is is uh, gives this album what I like. Uh, and uh, then the singing. That's that's as I said, John Tarty sounds better now than he did. I don't know, like 35 years ago in my mind. And he said somewhere himself that he finally understands what he's saying when he listens back to his own music. So he's better than ever. Uh, it's seven to eight very strong songs. Um, and they are nicely kind of, the song order is nicely mixed, uh, slower, faster and all that. The sound is really good. The cons, as I said, uh, some songs could have been a little bit shorter. And I'm missing the bass a little bit. I, I, I listen to this in headphones, in the car, and here in the studio, and really good speakers that I have here. And... Uh, I was, because it's not like there's some amateur on the bass, it's Terry Butler, you know, he was in death, he's, he's like a legend in the in the business, so I kind of was looking a bit for parts where he was allowed to shine, and I heard one or two times that I felt it, but apart from that, not really, so that would have been a nice extra touch. Um, now, this obviously is, is uh, a band that is set the bar really high in the beginning, and I mean like uh, Slowly Rot, Cause of Death, the end complete, these albums are landmark albums. So if we say that Cause of Death was like a 10, then I'm going to give this album a 9. And uh, I think if it would have come out, you know, some 30, 
40 years ago, this would have been a 10. But these guys, just they, they just put the bar so high that, that you can't really reach that again, I think. But a band that has been around 39 years delivering an album like this in 2023, staying true to the roots and the, and, and, and the structure and everything that they have, it's, it's amazing, actually. And uh, I think if this is what we are going to get this year, because this is a COVID album, guys. This album was supposed to come out earlier, I think 21 or something. And they, they, they said it in some interviews that they used COVID lockdowns to write material and blah, blah, blah. But there are other bands that are coming out with stuff like Metallica, In Flames, um, and uh, Overkill, I think. And, and a lot of bands are coming out with new stuff. I mean, Megadeth came out last year with a kick-ass album. So maybe we are looking forward to a great year of music where, where the musicians that we have loved for so many years have had time and been able to use that time because they couldn't be touring, so they actually had time to write some quality stuff. Um, Tell me what you think about this album. Where would you rank it within their catalog? It's a nine for me. I want to hear what it is for you. I'm going to go and see them next week. And I'm curious, should I do a concert review on them? They're going to be playing with Trivium and Heaven Shall Burn and some other band. Uh, I'll probably do a review anyway, but uh, I'm curious to hear what you think. Uh, I have a lot of stuff upcoming. I'm going to see Manowar, Accept, uh, Cannibal Corpse. Soul Stavir and Catatonia. And this is, I think I have five gigs next week. Revocation, Go Tour. So stay tuned, uh, subscribe to this, and put on that alarm thing, like and comment. I love the comments, guys. I try to answer every comment that I can. And what they do for me is that they actually kind of point me into different directions. So it adds a dynamic to my limited brain. Uh, hit like and subscribe. Or what else, guys? Did I say happy birthday to Dorina Oka? Yeah, I did. Take care, guys. See you around. Bye-bye.